Uh, good evening, uh, Thomas. Hey, Mike. Hey, hey uh, so uh, this week uh, we are we are going to immerse ourselves in a uh, in a in the ethereal world of uh, uh, mind and ghost connection, something like that, uh, something along those lines. Yep the the shining and the, uh, shining. the, the multiverse of the shining. <laughs> Yes, or or, yes. or the or the shinning as uh, the Simpsons would <laughs> have you. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, th this is Mike, uh, and Mike uh, joins me the, this week. Uh, uh, Thomas is my co-host, and we this week this is a, we are the first to last of the nerdum, and uh, this week uh, for our main show we are covering uh, the shining verse um, or the shinning verse, um, <laughs> as as it, as the joke. Uh, as a joke well told by the Simpsons, <laughs> not by <Yeah>. me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we rewatched, or, or you you hadn't seen uh, Doctor Sleep, so we 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 watched uh, The Shining again, and uh, I rewatched the Doctor Sleep, and you watched it for the first time. Uh, now I, I've I've read both books, The Shining and Doctor Sleep. Have you read? I, was uh, about mm -hmm. I I I have read The Shining um, a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't do anything with it this time because uh, I just yeah. watched The Shining, yeah. and then I re uh, my first watch there was Doctor Sleep. I I didn't know that they made a book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the book came out in two thousand thirteen, I think, and then uh, okay, and then the uh, the book or the movie came out in two thousand nineteen. I think they start started with uh, writing a script for it in 2016 but it wasn't uh until it made a bunch of money where uh they were like go 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 make this <laughs> doctor sleep <laughs> let's ride this stephen king lightning <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah um, I, I, yeah go ahead sorry oh uh, and uh, but unfortunately uh doctor sleep didn't perform as well as uh as they would have liked so uh but yeah, uh, I have some thoughts. Mm -hmm. I have some thoughts. Um, uh, I thought some thoughts. I uh, um, and and of course for for the uninitiated, um, The Shining, the movie, this a famous Stanley Kubrick movie that was made in 1980, I think, something like that. Yeah, 1980 mm -hmm. um, was uh, just uh, it, it took the world by storm. It was a complete reimagining of not complete reimagining, but it was a, it was a slightly different than the book, um, mm -hmm. and that was due to how you tell a story on film and Stanley Kubrick is amazing. I think famously Stephen King was not happy about it, how the movie <laughs> no, it <came> wasn't. <laughs> um, and you know, for that, but um, this is definitely, that's a good way to put it. Uh, that we, this is the shining verse essentially. That, so this is the world, their world um, yeah. where, uh, uh, you know, but there's apparitions yeah. and ghosts and there's this mm -hmm. supernatural i don't know how to describe it but the shining uh, i'll let you i'll leave you to describe yeah. the over you, you do a much better job than i do with that <laughs> okay uh, <clears throat> uh and then uh as a little prologue to this i'll give you a little history with the movie of the shining for me because actually um it goes back uh, to when i was a, a kid uh, on my uh somewhat first viewing but uh to even go a little further back uh, my first introduction to Stephen King, which I didn't realize was Stephen King, was the paperback book um, for the uh, short story collection Night Shift. I think I sent you a link, but uh, <clears throat> back in the day, I, I don't know um, if it was true for you, but um, uh, back uh, back when the, there was uh, with the grocery stores, they used to have a, like a little section, uh, a little uh, section for paperbacks. And then they'd have a section for magazines. And uh, I always would, <clears throat> while my mom was grocery shopping, I'd always run over there to uh, check out the magazines. And then they, I think they would also have like a little spinner rack for the comic books as well. So I, I would hang out there looking at all this stuff. And um, there was a, a cover uh, to a book that I was kind of fascinated by. And I, I guess I was probably nine or 10. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, that that blue cover there on the screen, the uh, Stephen King's night shift. I saw all these eyes and I was like, what is this? <clears throat> so, so I flipped up, I flipped is one of those double covers uh, where you could uh, open it up and there was a second image underneath. Oh. And, uh, and then oh, okay. I was like the cut hole, they, they had, it had cut holes in the, in the. Yeah. Front. Yeah, and exactly. Then, okay. 
Yeah, so you can cool, see cool. the eyes. So I flipped that up. And then if you uh, go back to the other page, you'll see what's underneath it. Uh, was this bandaged hand with these eyes in it. And that, that, that whole body horror of it was just kind of this really threw me off. And uh, <laughs> it, it affected me so much that I, I remembered that. And then, <laughs> sure. but I had no idea who Stephen King was back then. I wasn't until I was in uh, college, not college, but high school, and mm-hmm. was uh, looking for, uh, I had a, a, a speech drama class, and they wanted us to read a short story. And I'd heard, you know, Stephen King might be interesting. So I went and found Night Shift, and that, there was that cover, and it brought back all those memories of that. Wow, <laughs> I'm seeing cool. that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so the, Stephen King was scaring me even before uh, I knew who he was. <laughs> and then uh, a little bit later, um, do you remember the, I don't know, uh, back in the day, we had just basic cable. And um, every once in a while, there would be a weekend where you'd get HBO or Showtime free. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was that was a big weekend. You, you, yeah, yep. you, you, you just binge watch all these movies. And uh, so... Um, it seems like uh, there was always something big happening about that time because uh, there was this huge uh, episode uh, where uh, that involved a Han Solo action figure, and uh, I w- th- it won't be good for this podcast, but I'll, mm-hmm. I'll have to go into that story at one point where it's appropriate. It's it's a kind of a legendary story. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Uh, but but uh, but it also involved a, a, <laughs> a, a free movie weekend, but. Uh, so, so on this one, this particular one, uh, I uh, my dad would always stay in his his uh, his the the parents' bedroom and and watch uh, watch his TV while uh, everybody else would be in the living room uh, watching you know whatever. Uh, but uh, right. but my dad would kind of like to have his kind of quiet time every once in a while. So <laughs> so uh, I, I decided to sneak in there and take a look at what he was watching. And uh, I got in there and sat on the floor and watched the ending of The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, yeah I, I got in um, about the end where uh, Jack Torrance is uh, wandering the uh, um, overlook with his axe <laughs> from there on out. And um, there's a, a character that gets axed in the movie. And uh, that, that scene's always uh in my mind way more bloodier than it is <laughs> in actuality because because that that was the first horror movie i i really even see <laughs> i saw for sure. the first time and, and wow. uh when it, 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 it just went all over and it's like oh my god and i i had no no clue it was stephen king i didn't know no clue what movie it was sure. and so later on when uh, <laughs> when i was older older and was way into Stephen King and finally saw The Shining. He's like, oh, well, I, I've seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That, yeah. I, mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I, th- I was just going to wrap it up, but, but saying that that's sort of my my uh, introduction to Stephen King before I knew he was king kind of leads into our, <laughs> our discussion. But what's uh, what's your... Uh, uh, Not just so much. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's essentially the same. Uh, my dad uh one weekend we watched together i think we rented it i don't remember mm-hmm. how old it was um it was a uh, probably more like a um, preteen or, or teen or mm-hmm. on the cusp of, of teen but anyway we saw it and that was kind of our thing we would we would watch this or that um and i just remember being um like uh, not legitimately scared but like i do remember uh i do remember being shook a little bit uh, mm-hmm. And then, um, and then later on, rediscovering it when I was older, uh, type thing. Like when I'm in my 20s or whatever, then I, I I rewatched it. But that that time, that's when all the super creepy, weird stuff, like all the all the the the, the scenes and whatnot of the hotel and and the the just the creepy ambiance and just mm-hmm. the uh, the twins um, and this the, there's just so much visual stunningness that is just shocking um in mm-hmm. the context of it like but that just goes to kubrick's you know um thing i don't claim to be a kubrick super fan because i'm not um but i do mm-hmm. enjoy you know I, I enjoy there's like one that he did uh, uh or that eh, it's not important to this but yeah in any case yeah um and then stephen king i think i discovered later on as a as a young adult reading 
I think it was probably mm -hmm. first it was Dean Koontz. Um, mm -hmm. And Dean Koontz is like the opposite of Stephen King. Um, Dean Koontz mm -hmm. is like the Disney-fied version of, of Stephen King, I would say, like where there's a happy ending. You know, sometimes there is. Most of the time there is. Um, his stories are kind of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're popcorn, I guess, um, in, in a positive somewhat way to, to spin mm -hmm. that. But and then I was like, uh, I was really into it. And then uh, I was like, well, what other authors are out there? And then Stephen King, yeah, I had known, yeah. kind of sort of he heard about him. And I remember, mm -hmm. I remember um, he was on Arsenio Hall. Like, I don't know, uh, but I, I remember seeing him on Arsenio Hall like a really super long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, way long time. I think he was on anyway, if memory serves me, but maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. Anyway, um, <laughs> and then I started reading his books. You know, I read the Christine and, some of some of them my dad introduced me to like where the mm -hmm. uh, that but i'd read the and then i started to kind of match one to one and, and reading them and and it was just uh it was yeah. it, he's a very he's a damn good author um and he's really good at what he does yeah um, yeah and uh, i um i guess my first read was uh night shift and then um yeah the actually uh another uh, interesting thing about uh about the night shift is that um there's a short story that's not horror it's uh the last rung on the ladder which is kind of a poignant story about a a brother and sister and the 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 sister uh dies in it and um the uh i wanted to use that for my um for the the story i read and uh, but it was too long yeah you, you, i guess you had to i think it had to be under about five minutes or so and it was a little long story so what i did was um i i, I rewrote <laughs> the middle section of the book of the story so that it would work as a five five minute story <laughs> and uh um so i and uh, I, I read it and no one no one um uh, no one was like, "Hey, that didn't sound right" or anything. <laughs> Everybody was kind of it was was still moved by the story and everything. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it, it was moved enough to where I, I, they had some competition or something, and um, my uh, teacher entered me in a, a, a competition for reading to read that. So, okay, <laughs> um, I guess no one got. <laughs> uh I, I rewrote it in a note a notebook so I, I don't know why people didn't notice <laughs> that was written down. i was like why, why aren't you reading from the actual book <laughs> kind of a, a written version of it <laughs> but, uh, but yeah that was that was kind of interesting but the the my first horror novel that i read was pet cemetery by king and that oh, that, yeah. that one just blew me away as a as a kid um, as a teenager and uh, I was I was hooked from uh, before then. I, I had just read probably like you, science fiction and fantasy, and uh, yeah, that that book was uh, was something else. And then um, later on, I got a hold of um, his book Dance Macabre, where he talks about various horror writers. I sort of used that as a bible to uh, find uh, find other horror authors. But you know, from from Pet Cemetery on, I was a uh, uh, um, a horror yeah. novel fiend <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah. yeah um yeah that the um i i won the, of course uh my love pride and joy is sci-fi and um i i read this book they made it into a movie and the movie was not good but um, <laughs> yeah. it was okay it was okay but it was yeah. not as good as the book for sure and I, that's fuck, excuse me that's a very tropish to say that but Dreamcatcher was like one that i uh it had a some kind of alien sci-fi kind of thing that stood out for me. Um, I don't think people like this one as much as they like his other ones, like Pet Cemetery, like God classics, right. like Pet Cemetery, you know. But this is just this just goes my this is more akin to my obscure taste than anything else. But yeah. Yeah, I've heard that Pet I've heard that more uh, more than one time, like where Pet Cemetery was read, and it knocks somebody's socks off. Um, yeah. that, I have mm -hmm. not read that one. I need to, um, but but, uh, but yeah. But circling back to our uh, main uh, topic, I, I also yeah, I read um, The Shining not too long after uh, I oh. read Pet Cemetery, and uh, we used to go to a used bookstore, um, and uh, I'd get all my my uh, reading material from there, half off books, and uh, the the book that or uh, the version I read of The Shining was was the paperback. It was all yellow. It was the 
um, the poster for um, the Shining the movie. It was actually, you know, oh, okay. it, I guess it came out corresponding with with the movie. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it <laughs> had that that with that weird yeah that face yeah that was the cover of my book yeah. it was that with that weird face looking through the tea <laughs> but oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah that that book i haven't reread it since i read it back then and uh, there's still scenes from the book that uh that still grip me which uh, i still kind of think about which which is odd because uh, usually after i've read a book it just it, it goes out of my mind and i have such bad memory that <laughs> kind of <laughs> disappears uh, but yeah, basically, uh, the the book and the movie is about a, a family that goes off uh, into uh, this uh, to mine this uh, hotel that's mm -hmm. out in the uh, mountains, uh, and uh, basically it shuts down for a few months, um, and uh, they're they're just there to maintain it, make sure that the boiler doesn't freeze up and and whatnot. And uh, J Jack Torrance's wife Wendy and their son Danny. And they're uh, they're looking after um, the, the hotel, and Jack is also uh, is a recovering alcoholic, and he's also trying to write a book. Yep. And uh, so, yeah. and uh, so, in uh, there was hints that um, Jack, while he was drinking, had been a little rough and broke uh, Danny's arm during one of his drunken spells. And um, this is. I think one of the maybe the one of the reason this is only speculations, but I think one of the reasons why Stephen King uh, may not may have not have liked the movie in that I think any changes that were made to, this was probably a deeply personal one because he was it was semi autobiographical in that he 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 was kind of a recovering alcoholic as well when he wrote it that. yeah and uh, that that's in Jack Torrance is probably uh, kind of tied to some of the darker, darker moments of his life. So mm -hmm. um, not, not, not to say any, any abuse happened. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. We, no, we don't, we don't know. We don't know. But, but basically I think the, there was sort of uh, this, this work is uh, kind of probably more personal to him than maybe some of his other works and any changes that were made to the, to the, to make the movie probably kind of rubbed him a little bit wrong because it's so personal to him. Uh, that, yeah, that's the, just kind of speculation. <laughs> yeah, and not not kind of kind of jump into the kind of jump into the the, the cut. Um, the the ending of the book is not the same ending as the movie. Um, right. They're two they're two very very different things. But in a little bit we'll get into uh, perhaps we might broach on a little bit get into that with the um with uh, dr sleep uh when we mm -hmm. when we get to that point but yep. uh if, if we do but yeah th this yeah. was uh, iconic and famous um uh, god i just remember like the um there's just so so many things you that, that are, are cinematic or, or they're famous like mm -hmm. uh, the the memeified uh you know his face like that's a that was a thing before memes were even were a thing um mm -hmm. you know and then uh and then yeah. this, here's this, johnny <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> and then there's also the the famous blood um it just kind of like enough uh the, a yeah. moment of flashback or, or not a flashback but like a little kind of shining moment kind of sort of thing like where mm -hmm. just, just blood just mm -hmm. you know just blood of blood yeah and, yeah just the <laughs> this that's, that's all it's all very very iconic mm -hmm. uh and uh yeah i i of course, this is this is kind of uh, this is Kubrick's. This is one of Kubrick's um, great uh, films, uh, and I don't, yeah. I do not claim to know anything about Kubrick, but I know that yeah. I um, like more yeah. than than what I don't like. Uh, I, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I haven't seen all of his movies. Uh, in fact, uh, this this was a follow up to his movie Barry Lyndon, which I haven't seen. Uh, hmm. But basically, that movie I think did poorly. Uh, mm -hmm. at the box office so he knew he needed to make a, a movie that was a little bit more um, audience friendly uh, so mm -hmm. he decided he wanted to do a, a horror movie and he um, yeah yeah Barry Lyndon came out in 1975 Man, you're he, right yeah right and, on. Uh, so so yeah, the is uh, there was a story that his secretary has said that uh, they that she was uh, requested to go out and get a bunch of different horror novels for him to read, 
and to find something to maybe make a movie of. And she said that um, she would uh, be uh, be out uh, outside his office, and every once in a while she'd hear him throwing a book and slamming it against the wall because he's just disgusted with it. And uh, yeah, and she would uh, yeah every every few minutes, every so often she would hear another slam, another slam, <laughs> and, and then and then um, and then for a while there she she didn't hear any noise she's like okay what's going on and she opened up and he was deep into reading the shining uh, so uh-huh. that was the book that that he didn't slam <laughs> up against the wall awesome. so uh, that that was the one that he wanted to do and uh, obviously he, he got to do it um yeah i i, I noticed I, I forgot that he did eyes wide shut that's one of my favorite um favorite what's well, one of my favorites uh and uh, I remember seeing Dr. Strangelove too. I didn't know he did that one, to be honest, mm-hmm. uh, or forgot. I didn't, wasn't aware of it, but yeah. <laughs> the list speaks for itself. The man's a legend, uh, just point blank, but uh, yeah, kind of point it back to center. Yeah. Th- so yeah, you're, you're right. The, so this family comes in off season caretaker um, mm-hmm. they, and then, and then it's basically a matter of time before the hotel um, <laughs> grinds them down to, uh, to, uh, yeah. <clears throat> to, to that. Uh, yeah. And I think you can mm-hmm. go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to just say that um, I, the one of the contentions between Stephen King and uh, Kubrick is that Kubrick uh, doesn't believe in ghosts, so he took a more realistic approach. He wanted to make it uh, where you could explain it all as Jack Torrance's madness, that it he's, mm. he's sort of getting, you know, uh, cabin fever and going crazy, uh, whereas when you read the Stephen King book, it's obviously... A, a supernatural influence that uh, is coming over uh, Jack, uh, Jack the character. So, um, but uh, you know, there, there's sort of some ambiguity in the the movie. Uh, but uh, but one of the things that someone pointed out is that uh, every scene that where there's a ghost in mm-hmm. it, there's also a mirror present. So Jack really? Torrance could be looking in that mirror and talking to himself. And just just uh, imagining like with the <clears throat> like with the w- within the the bar uh he's you know there's like that big mirror behind the That's true. Uh, uh the waiter and or the bartender <laughs> and uh but yeah there's uh even in the scene in the notorious room 237 uh mm-hmm. there's uh, where the the woman comes out of the bath there's mm-hmm. a big, big uh mirror over to the side of it but yeah <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I found that that kind of fascinating and also there's a, a big thing about how the geometry and how the the layout of the hotel doesn't make sense uh mm-hmm. like um like the, the very beginning when he goes in for the interview for the caretaker position uh they take him into a inner in a, into an inner office but in the office there's a, a window out into uh, out into the outside uh where you can see trees and stuff where that could not be possible where the that that room is situated in the the layout for the (laughs) for the hotel uh so there's so there's that sort of you may not notice it but there's there there may be something in the back of your mind that's saying okay you know something's not not making sense here you know (laughs) And so, so there's a lot of that. And um, one of the things I didn't realize is that most of it was, uh, most of the hotel was constructed inside a big, um, a big uh, studio thing. Um, oh. You know, it, it, it was an actual, <laughs> an actual hotel in, on the inside. Um, but yeah, that. yeah. And uh, the, um, <clears throat> the outside, uh the, the one that Stephen King based it on the hotel was the Stanley whereas um and he he was upset with uh Kubrick cuz uh he he used the Timberland and uh one of the and, uh the the people that read the book um maybe thrown off in the uh, yeah the, the Stanley hotel um but one of the things they they may be thrown off with is that the room is 217 in the in the book whereas they changed it to the 237 in the movie 
uh and <laughs> there, there's this whole big conspiracy there's a movie called room 237 uh that goes into the this whole big conspiracy thing but but basically mm. the the reason why they changed it was that the uh timberland hotel was like uh could you could you switch it to a room that we don't have so that people aren't scared to stay in room 217 <laughs> <laughs> uh, but That's the funny, funny. thing uh, but the funny thing is is that the room 217 is uh, the most requested room <laughs> in the that hotel. <laughs> that's funny. Now, that's now. funny. Yeah, because uh, I think the um, and that's funny too because uh, I think that was on right on the the border of um, the world, uh, entertainment world, where practical pop thinking is like this is not good for business. Da 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 da. da. Mm -hmm. When in fact, actually, now well, more more true toward the 80s 90s and the uh, you know nowadays people mm -hmm. seek that out and that they you can get mm -hmm. all kinds of extra yeah. business and publicity yeah. in a positive way to actually sell your uh you know so whatever your, your you know thing is but um, right yeah definitely. there's a whole industry of the uh, ghost hunters and stuff so people want want to stay in the haunted rooms and <laughs> the weird oh, rooms. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I'm a sucker for uh, the occasional. Uh, th well, not so much anymore, but you know, if there's like a uh, you know, a well done you know kind of documentary or pseudo documentary on the haunting of the this or that, you know, that those are always in. Our, of course, in St. Louis, we have one uh, the the um, oh, well lamp. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. It's not important, but uh, I should have came prepared for that. I didn't think about that. The uh, um, there's like a there's there's a famous brewery um area part uh it starts with the l you, you know what i'm talking about the um yeah i think so yeah the, the i can't think of it but anyway uh it <laughs> doesn't matter but it, yeah kind of rolling back into the shining uh with my, my my pathetic uh memory skills to try to waste in the topic of the conversation uh anyway yeah the, uh this is very iconic um movie and um I didn't know. I, I went into, um, of course, this is classic. Uh, in in uh, if we're ready to break into Doctor Sleep. Um, oh, um, not not yet. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, sure. There's sure, there's sure. a couple of things, more things that I was gonna go over. Um, the, uh, but yeah, like like, uh, like it's showing the whole um, uh, that whole pattern on the on the rugs is is mm -hmm. very iconic. Uh, you could just see that pattern, and it just totally clicks over to. Uh, the Shining, and then that whole opening scene where uh, Jack is driving to his interview, that going through the mountains and everything. Mm -hmm. that, just that that shot is is beautiful and and amazing. But if you think about it, in 1980, the to be able to film that, you had to have a helicopter. You didn't do it, do drones, <laughs> so you had to get oh, a helicopter true. to fly fly point. in and. And it gets it goes down and gets real close to the car and then and then takes back off. That that was <laughs> very you you really had to plan and choreograph that. And that that's I, I'm always impressed with that opening scene and the whole movie. I, every time I, I watch it, 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 I forget how in, intense this movie is. There's some amazing scenes between uh, Shelley Long and uh, or no um, Shelley Duvall is her name, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Shelly, Shelly Shelly Duvall, Duvall. And, yep, you got it. And Jack Nicholson. Right, uh there's there's scenes between them that are just <laughs> like the scene where she has the baseball bat and she's confronting uh, Jack there and, and also Danny the, the kids are notoriously um bad actors obviously cuz they're they're just kids but Danny's uh, amazing in this. <laughs> I, all all three yeah. of them are amazing but um I think one of the reasons for that is that um uh, from what i what i read that kubrick would have them do the scenes over and over and over again and um there's there's also uh, been people talking about how how he was very abusive to shelly duvall emotionally abusive and to that one scene where she has the baseball bat um mm. that that he had uh, basically wanted her to be to to appear terrified so <laughs> he got her in a state where she was actually terrified so, i heard that too i heard yeah. that a lot of times um they would keep the script from her or or parts of it i think mm -hmm. if i recall if memory serves me i could be massively wrong on this but i believe that that, mm -hmm. that tracks with what i what i've 
yeah. remember uh, yeah. reading and hearing like that to where mm -hmm. she wouldn't know what was going on. And then all of a sudden it would just mm -hmm. be this massive fright. Um, yeah. And I, but I did hear that uh, Kubrick was a perfectionist. Yeah, uh, and if he didn't yeah. have it nailed down in his vision, then it, he would—they would just uh, man was a, a, a machine. <laughs> yeah, and then they, uh, and from what you said, that they did also do um, um, rewrites through through the whole movie. And in fact, uh, there was a, a thing where Jack Nicholson would, when they would give him uh, the new lines, he would just throw them away and say oh well they're they're gonna just change them again anyway so he would he would read them right before the the scene <laughs> and, and do them uh do them from there because <laughs> he got so frustrated with them uh but uh, better uh, an actor at that point uh, for him exactly for sure. and scatman crothers was was great oh, in it as well <laughs> oh absolutely i think um didn't uh didn't he get the axe uh for what you were talking about before yeah I yeah he he's uh, uh, dick uh, uh, uh his yeah. character dick Carruthers dick, or something or dick Holleran. uh but yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately he's the outside uh jack him and he was the only victim other victim of the of the hotel that <laughs> uh that winter and, and that's another thing is that this movie proves you don't have to have a big body count for it to be a, a terrifying movie oh, yeah no I, I agree and i think that's kind of what uh, one of the things that i just could care less about modern day well actually for a long time i just don't care for modern day horror films or scary films because to be honest with you it's either shock and awe uh or the gore you know um or it's something else that i just like uh, you know i could care less about but there's yeah. been a, there's been a few holdouts, but very rare. But then I'm not really a horror guy anyway, so I'm like probably the last person to ask about <laughs> any of these things. But um, yeah. I definitely have been. Uh, you've spoiled me because now I know what good quality horror is, and I <laughs> and, and I know that the absolute just garbage, um, you know, modern day garbage, like where they have like the the 30 second film of the Purge or whatever, you know, like yeah, okay, <laughs> cool, got it, uh, thanks. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the yeah, the as far as modern day A24 uh, does a lot of good stuff as far as horror, uh, like um, the uh, the witch, uh, the, and uh, uh the, the same guy also did uh, the Northman that just came out recently that I, I, mm -hmm. I want to want to track down, but that that's not really a horror movie either, but uh. But yeah uh but yeah there's there's some good stuff you just have to <laughs> know where to look and uh, i also there you, you also don't want to go with that um that uh that horror movie on netflix that looks kind of interesting <laughs> the, you probably want to do a little bit more research and find out who, who who actually did it and whatnot before plunging in because you're probably going to find a lot of crap just <laughs> just by uh <laughs> going from the title and the and the the uh the cover picture um but yeah, yeah. oh yeah this classic creepy creepy scenes mm -hmm. that I, I i when i was a kid i it, they kind of just didn't register you know because it's just like mm -hmm. oh that's weird and then you just kind of <laughs> don't remember it and then when i saw it again as a young adult uh is in my 20s like is like <laughs> Like, yeah what <laughs> yeah what is going on here like and it just it, it was just another um uh just another appreciation another angle to appreciate it from yep. just from everything yeah. all told it's just mm -hmm. creepy and weird and you know like mm -hmm. um you know just and, and i know uh plenty of people who like some can sit through this some can't <laughs> even yeah. to this day mm -hmm. yeah and that's that's another thing is that the 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 those bad horror movies that you were talking about the the crowd pleasers are the uh you know people can kind of set through whereas this one um like i was saying earlier it was it's it's an intense movie and people yes. uh people don't mind the 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 body count movies that that mm -hmm. really doesn't affect you but uh this is dealing with a, a dysfunctional family that mm -hmm. uh is on the edge of, of violence uh so that you know that may hit close to home for you know some people a little bit more more so uh than others and uh, you know that that can uh, kind of mess with your head um this the, absolutely yeah this 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 is like one of those moves that i love um that that that, that does in, in its own way go into that the the psyche the psychosphere the psyche sphere of of the mind and and what is reality what is not that kind of thing um especially when you're getting toward uh 
um, you know, like uh, things I've called out before. Um, it's not dissimilar from that eerie, creepy feeling you get with like True Detective or um, things of that of that nature, kind of sort of. Um, that, but those kind of like it's just so good. <laughs> it just yeah. is really good. It does it very well. Mm-hmm. And even to this day, you know, if you watch it, you know, I'm sure you can creep your own self out. Um, you know, kind of like. Maybe I'll turn an extra light on the night before I go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. we all know that they get you when you fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. Or something like they're, that. They're, they're waiting <laughs> under the bed, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, or or yeah. you forget to uh, close uh, close the door to your closet and it's got that inch open and you don't want to notice if there's some eyes peeking out. <laughs> yeah. Is that... Or, is that or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah is it that chair is the chair half a pile clothes on it or is that somebody in my room <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah there's um there's another story i was going to mention uh that there's a, a film editor his name's uh, Dwayne dunham he's worked with uh george lucas and uh david lynch uh but he was telling a story uh back in 19 uh so I guess it would have been the 79 where uh, he was helping uh, George Lucas edit um, Empire Strikes Back. They were both in London um, do, working on uh, Empire Strikes Back and they were working late at night uh, trying to get, get something right. And uh, uh, George Lucas gets a phone call and it's uh, Stanley Kubrick. And he says, he said, uh, hey, I, I've got this uh, new movie uh, that I was going to screen for myself and I, I wanted to see if you wanted to come over and watch it it's called Eraserhead uh David Lynch's Eraserhead <laughs> no so so George uh invited a young Dwayne Dunham to go go with him to uh, <laughs> it, it wouldn't that have been great to set set with George Lucas and uh, Stanley Kubrick oh. while watching uh <laughs> David Lynch's first movie Eraserhead <laughs> oh hell yeah oh, and yeah. uh but yeah, that that would have been uh, been cool. And then also, I was reading on the Wikipedia where, uh, I guess after after he screened it with uh, George Lucas, he showed it to the uh, the film crew to The Shining, and said uh, he showed them Racerhead and said, "This is the mood I want for The Shining." So, uh, so that that whole dark mood of the The Shining was uh, also influenced by uh, David Lynch's Racerhead. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. One of these days we're going to have to tackle Lynch. Uh, we've talked about <laughs> circle. It's yeah. one of the, one of the more fun ones too. Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, th- this, uh, th- this, the, God, just the iconic, I mean, the kid, you're right. You are, you, know, you want to echo that too. Like he, does, he, the child actor in this is very good. Um, uh, Danny Lloyd, mm-hmm. uh, or I, I mix up the character's name, but Danny Lloyd was the, yeah. Round, yeah. Yeah. Round. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah for sure for sure yeah um yeah this this wonderfully sets up um you, you know just the, it, it's very hard to make a movie um you know on something like this uh never mind the book the 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 iconic the book that is just one of dozens if not um several uh that Stephen king has done throughout the years um that joins this level of greatness and then you have this film which was done by a legendary film which just puts it further up in the stratosphere and of course it's been around since it's it's 42 years uh two years well it's two years older than i am but uh <laughs> um it just goes to show like the 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 uh the staying power of mm-hmm. of a great friggin great film and cinematics yeah. and storytelling mm-hmm. um yeah and then and um, with, mm-hmm. go ahead Oh, no, I didn't have anything to say. Just to oh, it uh, <laughs> the and then also they did uh, um, since Stephen King was unhappy with it later on, and uh, I think it's the two thousands. Uh, the um, Stephen King got the opportunity to uh, do a mini series of The Shining on ABC TV. Uh, it was directed by Mick Garris, uh, which was a, a much more truer to the book adaption. Mm-hmm. Although um, <laughs> it's uh, it, it was okay, but um, the acting was nowhere near <laughs> the quality of the, shi- uh, the original Shining, and uh, it's it was made for TV, so obviously they didn't have the budget to make a 
make it a, a, a spectacular kind of <laughs> movie right. like, like The Shining. So I did not see so, yeah. that one, but it'd be interesting. Yeah, I I think um, I mean the ending for the film obviously works because it's the film, but in the book. Um, and I don't know how, if you want to give it away or not, but, um, I guess we can wait till if that's relevant to uh, the next one, because yeah. it, it ties, it ties more into it than the, than the movie in the book. Uh, cause mm-hmm. the movie, the book is the book, the movie is the movie. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, then they made, remade this. I didn't even know that one that they made that one. I, I didn't even know it existed. Yeah. Um, yeah. I tell you, you told me about it until we yeah. were going to, we were covering our notes for what we were going to do this week. Uh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And then, um, uh, you made me remember one of the lines that Stephen King says is uh he said that whenever someone said, Oh, did you see that movie? That movie of your your book, they ruined your book. And uh Stephen said uh, Stephen King said, Well, no, the the the, the book's fine. It's uh, over there on my bookcase. <laughs> it's it's the book's the book's not ruined, it's it's still there. <laughs> nope, that's true. It's that's just very true. true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this sets us up for uh, going into uh, Doctor Sleep here. Yeah, I think. Unless there, was there anything else you wanted to cover or n- annotate or note? Note. Uh, I'll probably come up with something uh, tomorrow. Where <laughs> it's like, oh man, I should have <laughs> said something about that. But yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, which uh, which brings us into uh, to Doctor Sleep, um, and I believe Ethan. Excuse me, Ethan uh, McGregor. McGregor uh, is yep. the is Danny uh, in this one and and set, set us up for this one so like this one is in more modern day this came out in uh, 2019 uh, fairly not too long ago actually I I didn't even mm-hmm. know this existed to be honest with you like I had no clue and I'm glad you told me about it um, I do not think that this is anywhere near the quality or level of the, the Shining but it's not really fair to compare the two in that in that in right. that realm to be honest with you yeah uh, in my opinion. Yeah, and the uh, the book uh, for Doctor Sleep came out in 2013. Uh, Stephen King wrote it, and and yeah, the the book uh, book was good. I, I read the book, uh, but it was it's it's nowhere the the same quality as The Shining. But uh, so and it's obviously that you're going to compare the two, but uh, but it's it's um it's its own kind of creature. Uh, whereas the um, uh the original shining was you were kind of trapped in this hotel with uh the torrance family uh, this is a, a much more broader canvas uh you you uh cover a, a few different states <laughs> uh and uh both both physically and, and mentally uh but uh but yeah and then the um writer director is mike flanagan he's done a, a few different uh stephen king adaptions and in fact uh he's probably did a um he did a, a limited mini series uh that is probably one of the best uh stephen king adaptions where stephen king didn't write write it <laughs> mm. uh, mike flanagan did uh midnight mass i don't know if you've seen that uh it's on netflix mm. and it's 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 so so much of a stephen king sort of story and um mm. is 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 very very good it, it, it plays like a, a film to novel uh, even um <laughs> it's even broke up into books uh but yeah it's 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 really good you if you um are into a horror and yeah, that's sort of a small town horror kind of story uh hey, this, okay. this is for you <laughs> i i have i have not seen this but i have i have read uh, recommendations from it from uh general things i think i think mm-hmm. i read something about the atlantic they recommended it uh, but mm-hmm. for different reasons like more along political ideological i haven't care about that but uh what i got from it was like hmm, this might be something cool to check out uh, at some point for mm-hmm. sure um, yeah. but and i have no clue what it what it's about but it, it definitely th- mm-hmm. this is a recommend for sure oh yeah 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 and uh, awesome. like i said he awesome. he's kind of got that kind of sensibility that uh, the same sensibility that stephen king does so he's a great great person to uh, adapt stuff uh okay. from uh from king and uh, like I said, he also did a, a couple of uh, King adaptions before. He did a uh, Gerald's Game, which I haven't seen, uh, mm-hmm. but um, uh, he's also done the the Haunting of Hill House, uh, also on Netflix. Uh, that's really good. Uh, but yeah, so um, but yeah, D- uh, Gerald's Game. I guess uh, Doctor Sleep would be his second uh, adaption of of King. I thought- Mm-hmm. I thought he did uh, Cloverfield or, or 10 Cloverfield 
lane, something like that, or I don't, what no, am I, yeah. why am I thinking that? Um, I thought he did that one. I, I know he did Oculus. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't see yeah. that one, but I, I, I um, had mm -hmm. done light research on him because I had no clue who this person mm -hmm. was, um, aside from just watching yeah. this to see if it lined up with anything else. I had not seen that. I believe this is the first one. I don't know why I think that he did. Maybe, maybe he was a writer on it or something. I don't know, but hell. Oh. Now it's that's, that's gonna bother me. Uh, <laughs> um, in any case, um, IMDb. Uh, no, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I don't know. Uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> that has nothing to do with this. <laughs> whatever. No, anyway, going back to the thing, I I, I did enjoy this movie. Um, it, it was good. Um, it. it it paid homage to the uh, to the the end of the book in a, in a way, um, mm -hmm. um, in a way that the Stanley Kubrick well the Stanley Kubrick was stand on its own, and the book The Shining stands mm -hmm. on its own, like I was saying before. Yeah. But um, this is a very interesting intertwining um, of the of the conceptual ideas there, and of course this this is this is the same uh, uh, the same character uh, Danny Torrance or Dan Torrance. Um, Mm -hmm. Say kind of the same hangups that his father has, uh, alcoholism, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. He's got a he's got a handle on it, um, and you 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 kick open. You're right. It, it's not just you're right. Uh, you you were uh, uh, mentioning that you you were only set in the hotel. That's it. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, essentially in the, in the shining the movie, I mean they, they they do they go elsewhere, but only for a glimpse here or there or transition scene otherwise that that's the world the world that we are introduced in and we stay in is the hotel mm -hmm. and this is a much wider field of that and you kind of get the you kind of get a deeper background on this uh, concept of the shining um and what it means mm -hmm. and uh, a lot more character development or, or excuse me character and um uh, kind of understanding how this world works a little bit more um but essentially you have these um immortal group of people that feed on um folks that have the shining or the ability like that um and they 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 they, they suck them dry they're like a vampire i guess i don't know how to put it but uh and it keeps them young and and whatever and um it's just it was really good <laughs> yeah yeah and um yeah and dan he uh better than i thought it was gonna be, let's yeah. put it that way <laughs> yeah and uh yeah with dan torrance he uh i guess falls into alcoholism like his father uh to dull dull his um his uh shining abilities which kind of makes you wonder maybe uh did jack torrance actually have some of those abilities and he used his alcohol to, to dull it for him as well uh, yeah Th th there's some creative freedom that they do there. Like they don't quite allude to it solidly, but they, they kind of give you hints to kind of, I guess, figure it out for yourself, maybe. Um, yeah, you know, it's, like... it's one of those tricky things where he was adapting, uh, he was making a sequel to both the the book and the movie, and he, he found an interesting mix to kind of, because the, the Doctor Sleep ends a little bit differently as well because in the book uh the hotel had already uh been <laughs> been blown up uh whereas yeah <laughs> whereas it's uh was still still uh intact in the uh the movie version and so he kind of brings it full circle in that he has dan uh, blow up the movie and or blow up the hotel in this one uh, and that's uh in fact um stephen king worked with mike flanagan on the script and they um he said Stephen King said that it kind of brought him peace with the uh, with the original movie and uh, this movie and that it, it kind of mm -hmm. kind of uh, kind of put to rest uh, some of his issues uh with the original movie with this movie so he was very happy with with this <laughs> yeah it, it's it's they kind of switch around um but the the two main characters that um uh, are well uh, irrevocably linked together um in, in almost a sweet way is uh is dan and abra um, yeah there's and 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 that that what you're talking about with the scene there i don't want to give it away too much but yeah mm -hmm. it, uh, and, and kind of speaking of the book the book's ending 
I, I, I couldn't help but think about, uh, you know, maybe, you know, aside from like, and that's a great thing, the speculation that you, you laid into about Stephen King and his past and the, the, you know, the, the well that he drew on to create these characters and, and are, are definitely parts of him are all throughout his books. Um, only he can really speak to what is really deeply personal. And if he ever tells, I know mm -hmm. occasionally he'll talk about things. I think he's got his own website or something, but in yeah. any case, um, definitely has his own Twitter for sure. I've seen, um, <laughs> I've seen quite a few of his, uh, tweets throughout the yeah. years. Uh, but anyway, um, that was my point. Um, uh, my point was, um, you know, that ending, I, I can't help but think like, the book it leaves you in, in a state to where it, it, it's the way that it ends is kind of like a goodbye. Um, it kind of closes things up, not in a happy manner per se, but it, it kind of it, it completes the that's it. Um, you know, with yeah. the with the ending the way it is, and they yeah. they borrow that that idea. Um, well, I won't give away the characters, but it's it's just very interesting how the how they played that and how. Um, so I guess so. Okay, so the ghosts um, are are able to be trapped or or uh, walled off in in um, these characters' mind. Well, in Danny's mind, anyway, mm -hmm. or Dan's mind. And um, and then you know, um, like I said, there's this. I believe Rose the Hat is the you know like one of those. I don't know what they're called. I can't remember what they're called. But they they feed off of people like Dan and or Danny mm -hmm. and and those that have the shining. Yeah. Um, that ability um yeah i, I think in the movie they just call them hunters didn't they okay i so, sounds right uh, something, I, something like that yeah <laughs> I, I didn't pay too much attention to to that part right. but, um, <laughs> yeah, i was the, more focused on danny terminology and the, yeah <laughs> and the interplay there um of course if i probably watched a couple more times i'd you know grab onto that but uh, for for the purposes of uh, of talking about it um it, it's mm -hmm. very interesting um how they do that um and mm -hmm they build on that on that world for sure yeah. uh, what, what did you what are your thoughts on i'm dying to know like what do you what did you think um how this held up versus the other you know the other side i mean did you like it or is it a favorite or is it um yeah, what made I, you I, pick this one yeah i think um it's 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 as uh, probably good as it as it could be <laughs> if you understand my meaning yeah. it's it, it's a, yeah. a solid thumbs up i it doesn't it doesn't embarrass itself it doesn't mm -hmm. it, it kind of gives its own reason for for being there uh it i it's do the true not that's what they were called that, that sorry right. sorry anyway yeah, go on the true not yeah uh there's um there's a section in there where uh they do do battle with the true not uh and uh, there, there are times where it seems like, oh, that they're not as once they start fighting them, they they don't seem as as big a threat as they they had seemed, you know, from the build up. And yeah, that was the, that's the problem the, the, that I had with it. Yeah, I I, I get that because they kind of build them up to be this Illuminati kind of like, um, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think. We we covered a movie like not too long ago that had kind of sort of had like this. Uh, this uh Suspiria, like where the the witches and and uh, mm -hmm. this ancient cult of people uh you know who are immortal you know living through time or whatever um and have their own nefarious sins this this thing but yeah you're right that, that is a good point um mm -hmm. that's a good that's a great point and uh it does does pay off uh it does build up and uh the ending is 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 good but uh but yeah for for a while there it, it seemed like oh i mean <laughs> Is a real, but yeah, and then the I, the strongest aspect uh, you you mentioned was the relationship between Dan and uh, Abra, and uh, the there's uh, a, a lot of scenes in the movie that echo the original. Uh, there's a scene where um, Dan goes to uh, this doctor for a, a sort of a job interview, and it's the office looks exactly like the one from. Uh, the Shining, where <laughs> his dad is Deuce. being interviewed. <laughs> yeah, Stu Ullman's um, mm -hmm. interview. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, the they did a very cool thing with the uh, with the flashbacks and uh, some of the ghosts, where um, instead of going in and um, getting an actor and then digitally making the the actor look like uh shelly duvall or jack nicholson they just got someone like like disney does uh where where they they actually just 
went ahead and just got someone that looked similar uh mm. to the to the actors um a young danny a young shelly and actually the uh the the lady that does uh the shelly duvall character um wendy she did a, a great job <laughs> actually was thinking oh man she'd probably been a yeah <laughs> if she was alive back then uh she would have been great in, in the original shining uh but um and then uh the uh uh, they had Henry Thomas uh, play uh, Jack Nicholson, which, I mean, he looked <laughs> not exactly, but he really embodied the the look of uh, the Jack Torrance character, and really made me believe that that was <laughs> that was that character. And then uh, the guy that they got to do the Dick Holleran character um, that Scatman Crothers did uh, originally was was very good too. Um, he uh, he was a, a ghost that guide that guides Danny or Dan through uh through his uh recovery uh, but yeah the um but yeah it, like I said the the movie doesn't embarrass itself it has a lot of scenes that kind of echo like that <laughs> the the original movie and uh it it's a it's a good solid good solid movie uh it's uh there it has a higher body count than <laughs> the shining uh but it does, uh, <laughs> it, it does. Uh, I, yeah. I, I mean it, it's a modern day you know i don't know what you call it um it's a modern day uh, continuation on that world i guess and it's kind mm -hmm. of funny how they start in the world and they end in the hotel um essentially mm -hmm. um not giving any too much away but um mm -hmm. it, it it you kind of you see um so these ghosts, these apparitions are are in his mind, but they're not really. I don't really know how to describe it, but they're they're like firewalled off. Uh, uh, un unless, I guess, the point of being in the hotel is it loosened that a little bit, or that that he loosened up a grip on that, and then they kind of um, they do that too because uh, they he kind of uses his ability as a weapon. Um, but there's a very heavy price that he pays to do that to kind of defeat uh, defeat uh, um, um, the uh, true not God bless America um, uh, that sorry rose the hat um, and yeah. she's always wearing a hat and she's part of the uh, true not is the main antagonist um, they had the showdown and then uh, they just kind of start feeding on things and 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 that's when uh, Danny popped that door open and he wasn't able to close it, uh, uh, unfortunately, and it took over and, and uh, but um, it, it, he had, I don't know, I don't want to go into too much, um, you know, symbolism or whatever, but there was enough good left in Danny to, to kind of make sure that it all stopped, um, yeah. essentially with, uh, yeah. with where, where we're left off with toward yeah. the end of this movie. Yeah. And, uh, the, I guess they, they hope for, it to do uh, amazing box office, which it didn't. Uh, they were uh, hoping to do uh, maybe a, a prequel, and then also uh, the writer also was kind of wanting to do a, a sequel with uh, opera, but that that didn't obviously happen because uh, it didn't do well. Uh, but the um, uh, the the new, I, the I, new I can, huh? I, yeah, I, I can see why. Yeah. But uh, with with the uh, HBO uh, uh, streaming service, uh, of course, they have to have uh, the almighty content. They've got a uh, uh, <laughs> a series called uh, the Overlook that they're doing uh, for the uh, the streaming service. So um, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll have that that to look forward to in the in the future. And I'm not sure if it's just i think it's going to go over uh the the history of the overlook uh so who knows how well that that'll be <laughs> yeah the, um, um that's funny okay oh it does have it um anyway find that out for later on yeah i could find it. but yeah uh what's, what was that called the, the overlook the overlook yeah it's um they're working on it right now it's um To be, to be coming up. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully this is it. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Is that it? No. Uh, 
Doesn't look like it. Well, all right. <laughs> that looks like that's a short. But yeah. Yeah, over the TV cool. series. That that's their uh right under Bosch. Uh not that one, the next one down. Overlook TV series. That probably is it. Oh look at that. Mm. Yeah. So well, yeah, well, it's it's in it's in production. So yeah, the, it hadn't uh, obviously been uh filmed yet. But uh but yeah, I don't think Mike Flanagan's involved in that. I haven't heard one way or another, but uh so yeah. I don't know how good that's going to be, but yeah, obviously they're looking to expand the universe of uh, the Shining. You know, they're all <laughs> the all powerful multiverse that everybody is going for nowadays. Yeah, I I don't think that the, I do not think that a, a remake or a, a extension of this universe with Abra would work at all uh, nowadays, especially in lieu of where we're at currently with pop culture and, and certain dynamics and all that. Um, plus mm-hmm. there's just not, to be honest with you, like that, I mean, although I enjoyed Dr. Sleep, um, I would, it, it's nowhere near the top of anything, of anything for me personally. Mm-hmm. It was, it's just a nice, good, solid film, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It doesn't suck. It certainly doesn't mm-hmm. suck. I mean, maybe other, others feel that differently about that, but for the most part, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's yeah. Still- good movie that i didn't know (laughs) know yeah i think i think that may be one of the reasons why it didn't do so well because uh the people that it would appeal to didn't know about it and then the uh gen z people were like uh why do i want to watch a uh, a sequel to a 40 year old movie (laughs) right yeah (laughs) for sure yeah yeah. that i don't don't know about (laughs) so yeah yeah they're, uh, they're, uh-huh. it, it, just good uh, solid acting all around um you know it yeah. kind of gets a little it, uh, it gets a little no. thin in some areas but you know that's to be expected um yeah the the uh, I, again the the kids in this movie were pretty good actors as well <laughs> mm-hmm. no, uh, no bad kid acting in it indeed yeah the I was surprised too. Uh, they, the all the actors and actresses, uh, they did very well in this. Um, enough mm-hmm. to keep it, keep it popping, uh, keep it, keep the entertainment mm-hmm. going. Um, yeah, I don't think that you could have done any worse. Um, or been, uh, and again, like it just kind of nobody knew about this. I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I was. I, I I sometimes forget about like last week when I was suggesting The Shining to you. It, it, it dawned on me oh yeah there's a sequel that <laughs> came out that i'd seen uh dr sleep <laughs> and then i threw that in there too i was like okay we could do both of those <laughs> oh for sure yeah it's good it was good but yeah you just can't rep, uh replay it, it's it's a worthy um worthy enough um to mm-hmm. continue yeah, that I, yeah and I, I told uh this guy at work uh what we're talking about this week and he was like, "What? I, I never heard of Doctor Sleep either." So, uh, yeah, exactly. it, evidently, it, it kind of flew way under the radar for everybody, <laughs> uh, which is a uh, which is a shame. I, I guess uh, it could have done a, a lot better if maybe they had advertised a little bit more or um, made it made its presence known. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't help but wonder if it were maybe made a couple of years before it was. Um, maybe it would have fared better. Maybe I'm not sure, but. Uh, mm-hmm. The book was relatively recent uh, compared to when was the original Shining um, published? Anyway, now, that's a good question. I, excuse me. <clears throat> I think it was I wondered that. like nineteen seventy four. I was thinking seventy six, but I could be could be wrong. I don't. Uh, you know, I was a history uh, major, so you'd think dates would be. Oh well, <laughs> I was uh, one off. Seventy seven. Yeah. Way off. <laughs> Uh, I was way off. Uh, cool, cool. Yeah. But yeah, okay. So I uh, never mind that argument. Uh, so I was going to say, like, <laughs> well, you know, maybe it was, you know, this is short and short. No, this was short and short, too. And this goes to, to speak. That was a young Stephen King, too. That was a good. Mm-hmm. Of course, I don't know. I just know what I know. I, I just really know what I like from him uh, that I've read um, that are good, you know, aside from him being the mm-hmm. probably one of the, the, legendary if not the ones or uh, modern day um you know um authors that create this genre of books so well mm-hmm. so, so so iconic mm-hmm. yeah well uh, yeah stephen king he kind of got was my foot in the door to horror 
uh, books and uh, that led to Clive Barker and led me mm -hmm. to uh, uh, the that Silver Screen collection I, I talked about with our interview with Joe Lansdale and brought me to Joe Lansdale. <laughs> very true. Very true. So, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stephen King uh, kind of uh, kind of touched uh, several points of, of my life and uh, yeah, that's it's kind of kind of weird how how that happens that that someone you've never met and who will never know you existed has made a you know such a, a various impacts at various times in your life <laughs> for sure yeah absolutely that it's very true in my life as well um uh, for mm -hmm. for different authors that i've never met or ne never mm -hmm. will well ones i like are dead but mm -hmm. um <laughs> point being still the same um they're never going to know about mike shaw or or, or you know mm -hmm. tom uh, but yeah it's true uh mm -hmm. I, this is just a good good solid good uh kudos to you again for for uh, mm -hmm. coming up with these these ideas here um and mm -hmm. i've been appreciative because i didn't um i don't know why i just never got into horror all, all that much but um um i i, I definitely i'm becoming a snob <laughs> <laughs> yeah in the, in the most best way possible because to be honest with you like uh you know like after like okay you know horror you know you have freddy krueger your 80s classics and 90s classics too i guess but you know it's just like you know like after you're you know, you kind of age out of them and it's just like yeah okay it's a memory nostalgia but not really um you know unless you're like i know folks that are like super into into that um and that's fine but Mm -hmm. uh you know it's just like okay uh body gore got it uh check <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we and then we move on you know um but yeah this is a good good uh great thing um to know that it exists i'm glad that they made it still uh, uh it's uh, like i said it's 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 worthy enough to carry that mantle forward as best as it as it, as it can and you know what these things who's to know in 10 years that it doesn't become a, a cult or a, a niche kind of hit maybe i haven't heard anything but um i would be interested have you heard anything like where there's just like a super cadre of, of folks of fandom around uh, around the newer version or not really no <laughs> no <Nah. laughs> okay but uh, but yeah probably too early to <laughs> true fair enough fair point, fair well, point. Yeah, yeah it's it's probably one of those that um at one point someone will rediscover it hey our podcast will probably uh reinvigorate everybody into it and as <laughs> and, and a tidal this, wave <laughs> this is our breakthrough moment you just yeah. never know it, you, right. you don't know until you until you until you break through so <laughs> mm -hmm. to the other yeah. side <laughs> uh any anything else to add um this week uh, on our uh, main uh topics we were rolling up just a little over an hour here no i think uh that kind of starts to put a pin in it and tuck it into bed and <laughs> put it off to sleep <laughs> with doctor sleep not the yeah. eternal sleep <laughs> but no no, sleep. no no yeah no just in just in room two uh 217 <laughs> um and 37 because we got a good yeah. billing rate mm -hmm. for uh for <laughs> yeah <laughs> i guess the only other thing is uh the whole conspiracy that kubrick uh filmed the uh moon landing and uh, oh, the, and uh, that the uh, one of the things that that uh, conspiracy movie goes into is that uh, Kubrick kind of points out various things. Like uh, I think the two thirty seven was supposed to be uh, I forget what measurement it is, but it's the distance between Earth and Moon. It's two hundred thirty seven, whatever it is uh for uh measurement and uh, also the uh scene where uh the um danny gets uh mauled by the ghost and he comes to his parents uh kind of speechless sucking on his thumb uh he's wearing a sweater with the uh, with an astronaut on it uh -huh. and yeah and then also the iconic classic um rug with the kind of hexagons on it it's hexagons right yeah yeah it was yeah that, that, um, that's the but, famous hallway where he's on yeah. his big wheels and then yeah, he's yeah, playing yeah. with his little cars yep mm -hmm. uh but those patterns look like uh the launch pad interesting interesting so, yeah so it's sort of his uh, apology for uh for doing the uh <laughs> 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 the moon landing 
I, I don't, <laughs> never mind the moon landing being fake. We all know the Earth is flat, right? No. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. With that. Oh, you know, we we don't want the do- Department of Truth knocking on our door. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do not. No, we do not want those folks knocking on our door at all. <laughs> yeah, Lee Harvey Oswald, just stay, stay where you're at. <laughs> stay in the time space zone you're in. Uh, <laughs> leave us be, for sure. Yeah. Uh, with that, uh, I think we're we're coming up to the end of this week's show. And uh, mm-hmm. th- again, thank you, Thomas. Like this is a, a great, great uh, double double header for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, double yep. feature. Uh, uh, and with that, um, I've been Mike. I'm Thomas. And uh, we'll see you next week. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention, uh, too, we have a couple other shows, too. And we're, we're, uh, we have our grab bag every Wednesday. And we have our, our, our uh, um, I guess it's uh, our, our Star Trek-ish uh, show. We, we wrapped mm-hmm. up the first Trek through Trek, um, which uh, I will be uploading soon. Uh, mm-hmm. And I forgot to last week. I uh, told it Mia Copa, uh, Mia Copa uh, for that. And, and in any case, um, I will be continuing on, but with uh, Star Trek strange new worlds mm-hmm. uh this week on friday so uh if you don't have and uh please uh if you like our like what we're doing uh like comment subscribe please let us know what you want to see uh, if you have ideas for our main show or for a grab bag or, or anything they're in let us know uh, and we'll be looking out for it yep and with that uh we'll see you later yeah